The northern tall grass prairie is the most endangered grassland system. We've lost over 97% of the tall grass prairie. Uh, it is, of course, on the richest farm ground, so therefore it is ideal to be converted to row crop production. We have lost a tremendous amount of it, and what is left is in remnant isolated prairies for the most part. I originally started, moved here in 2003. We've been here for uh, over 100 years on this land, and a lot of it has been farmed for uh, years. The, right here where we're at used to be a crop field. Back in the day, they actually cultivated that soil out there. Uh, we have a lot of grassland that uh, they got turned into farmland. Still should, should, should have been grassland. <laughs> but um, uh, people did what they thought they should do. The corn was falling over. Well, by fall, it was all tangled and stuff from rootworm. And so what, what do you do about it? Well, it was, you got to put this chemical on. And my dad said he wasn't going to be messing with any, any poison. And so uh, it was planted back to grass. When you take land and use it for something that it wasn't really meant to be used for, then it's going to come and bite you someday. When I was started to pay an attention of my environment and what was going on around me, I looked and I thought, what in the world has happened here? It was just, to me, total devastation. No matter where I looked, I thought, this can't be real. What do I do? Okay, so it's been about five years ago. Um, we started a partnership with SDSU Beat Ballman at the extension office there and Caroline, the owner, uh, came, got a hold of Pete and started wanting to do some restoration work on her grasslands. It's been a really good partnership with SDSU Extension and with the Game Fishing Parks and all the other partners we've been working on here to start restoring the prairie back to a more native setting. The powers that be have come together to help me with this project, to try to regroup and reestablish this pasture and the, the beauty around it, the balancing of it, getting it back to what I know that it can be. We decided to figure out what we could do to change where we were when we knew that our, our land was depleted. So we sat down and figured out how we were going to do that. We made a, a three-year plan that turned into a six-year plan. And we decided we were going to uh, plant all of our farm ground back to grass. Because we, in our hearts, we felt that's what it should be anyway. And uh, so we uh, sat down with some goals and some, uh, some things that we wanted to see happen uh, with our land and with our lives. And with our lifestyle was a big part of it. We didn't like where our lifestyle was at that point. And so one of our goals was to put cover crops on our land for three years and put livestock on it. And in order to do that, we had to put fence around our crop land and put water on it and then, uh, and then eventually reseed it. So it was probably, as I look back, three years was probably kind of a lofty goal for that. But, uh, but we set into it and we sold machinery as we needed to to pay for fences, uh, to pay for water lines and eventually pay for grass seedings. We did have some help from some organizations on some of that uh, through NRCS and a couple other organizations that helped us with some plantings. I've done a lot with U.S. Fish and Wildlife and, and I like working with all of them because they do have great people out in the field to explain these programs and help with these programs so you get the full benefit of, of doing it. And it makes the job a lot easier if you got somebody helping you with it. The importance of grassland reconstruction in the eastern South Dakota landscape is pretty critical because there's just not a lot of grass left on the landscape. So what we do have left has to be high quality so it can be as productive as possible because there's just not a habitat left that was here 20 years ago, let alone 40 or 50 years ago.
In Eastern South Dakota, uh, when I started working here, everybody kind of worked within their own agency and within their own specific district or zone or however you were organized. And we would occasionally get together at meetings and talk and, you know, find we're kind of doing similar stuff, but nobody really collaborated that much. And then I would say, I don't know, a decade plus ago, you started seeing much more collaboration between Fish and Wildlife Service and Game Fishing Parks and Nature Conservancy and Pheasants Forever. Partnerships across South Dakota are really important. So working for the Nature Conservancy, uh, we like to use our sites uh, as demonstration sites at times. So we could take ideas, put science behind it, and then take it to the next level, see what we find. But then in the bigger picture, being able to transform that into working lands, um, because we know if we're gonna make impacts across South Dakota grasslands, it's gotta be bigger than any one agency. This project is unique because it brings together a bunch of partner organizations and all partners bring something very unique to the table. We all want our lands to be multifunctional, not only wildlife havens, but also um, working lands, profitable lands. And so what we're also demonstrating here is the power of some of these uh, shorter and longer term programs for a producer to take advantage of as they go through a transition phase uh, of restoration. Working with other people, it, you know, like Kyle, Kelsey, and, and Joe, and Pete gives, gives you other ideas and stuff that you can play around with. You know, Pete doesn't really have a whole lot of land to play around with yet, we still do, so he can come with us at ideas that we can implement on our ground. You know, same with Joe or anybody else. Like, that's, that's the beauty of having the opportunity of uh, trying out these new restorations and stuff like this is you get all these ideas from other people, heck, let's give it a shot and you never know, we could be the, it could be the next movement in, you know, grassland restoration. When we think about partnerships with the Grassland Coalition and, and Audubon, Audubon is really interested in that space of keeping grasslands uh, green side up, keeping grasslands on the landscape. And so we understand uh, very clearly that we can't do that without working with ranchers. Uh, the Grassland Coalition as a um, grassland manager led organization. We say a, a rancher led organization or producer led organization, but it's even beyond that. It's a, a grassland manager led organization. Uh, all of the board members own and, and or operate grass uh, centric enterprises. And so uh, they carry a lot of integrity, I guess, the, the board does as well as the whole coalition in the ranching community. Uh, and are, are well thought of. And the coalition itself occupies a space that's really focused on education, peer-to-peer -peer education primarily, and getting producers the tools that they need to implement good grass management, basically uh, profitable, sustainable grass management that keeps grasslands on the landscape, keeps ranchers ranching, keeps small towns thriving, and then we get all the ancillary benefits, right? We get wildlife, we get clean water, Fresh air, biodiversity, pollinator habitat, all of those things come as a, an ancillary benefit to keeping grasslands on the landscape through keeping ranchers ranching. It is really important to, um, to do what we can. Right now there, there are opportunities for, actually there's opportunities for cost share, there's opportunities for, for help in accomplishing, restoring some of your, uh, whether it's just cropland, you're looking for a major change in your lifestyle, uh, in your business, or whether you just want to do part of it, uh, this definitely is the time to, this is time to do it. Maybe it won't be what you think it's going to be or what you're manifesting in your mind, what you see. Maybe it'll even be better. You just gotta have faith. <laughs> you just gotta have faith. <laughs>